I would like to add one more layer on top of the state machine that we built in our previous video. So if I click on the suited man, our character, and I look at idle and walking, the way this is set up, every single state would have to have their own script, which is fine for now. But most of the states are going to be a combination of character moving forward or jumping up or turning. For example, walking here involves a character moving forward, but this is not the only state that has a character moving forward. There's a lot of attack moves that involve the player dashing forward. So what if instead of writing code for every single state, what if we could insert a card into the machine or a group of cards or a combination of them and the machine would just read the cards and control the character based on those predefined actions. So for idle, instead of having the script player idle, I would just insert in the idle card here. And for walking, instead of writing this code, I would insert a card that defined the action of player moving forward. And that would be it. So that's what I'm planning to do in this video. In order to create cards that have predefined actions, I'm going to use something called scriptable object. Scriptable objects are data containers, but they don't need to be instantiated in the hierarchy. You can keep the scriptable objects in the project window. And since they're not prefabs, you can just go in there and change the numbers. You don't need to apply or anything. Try Googling Unity scriptable objects. For now, we're just going to move on. So let's create a C sharp script. I'm going to call it state data. Go in there. And the script is going to inherit from something called scriptable object. And we're going to turn this into an abstract class because this is going to be the base class for all our predefined actions. Every state is going to have a time of duration. And we also want each state to update based on the predefined cards. So I'm going to call it update ability. And it's going to take in the parameters of character state base as well as the animator. And let's find the character state base. Here it is. This script is going to have a list of the state data we just created. We'll call it list of ability data. And we want this to go through the list and update every single one of them. And it's going to take in the same parameters. For each state data in the list, go in there and simply update. And we want to be updating every single frame. Remember this from our walk or idle script. Instead of writing code for every single one of them, we're now just going to say update all. And we're done. Save your scripts and let's go back to Unity. We're going to remove the idle script and we're going to add the code that we wrote. Do the same thing for walking, get rid of the previous code and add in the new one that we just wrote. Now that both of these scripts have the exact same code, the only difference is going to be what kind of objects are we going to put into this list. And we also want to define the size of the list. For both idle and walking, the size is just going to be one. But for other states that might have multiple actions, could be three or four or five, as many as you want. But for these two moves, it's just going to be one. So now let's create a scriptable object called move forward. Move forward. Go in there. Do the usual stuff. And this script is going to inherit from the state data that we 
created. And I want to be able to create this scriptable object from the project window. So I'm going to create an asset menu, call it new state. And I'm going to create a menu called Round Bear Games Ability Data Move Forward. I need to override the update ability. And this is where the action of moving forward is going to be defined. Save and let's go back to Unity. Now if I do a right click here and go to Create, we have a Round Bear Games menu, Ability Data, and Move Forward. Click on this. We have a new scriptable object. Call it Move Forward. And here we can enter individual numbers for our public variables. Let's go to Player Walk. And we want to copy paste this definition into the move forward script in here. And I think I'm going to get the character control in the beginning of this function. Get it from the state base, get character control, animator. It's called C. We just copy paste it in there. For speed, we're going to define a variable right here in the scriptable object. Public float speed, and that's going to replace this code. Save and let's go back. Click on the walking state. Now that move forward has been defined, all we have to do is drag this card into this section. Now let's do the same thing for idle. We're going to create a script called idle. That's going to define the action. And we do the same thing. We're going to have the same folder location, except it's going to be called idle. We're also going to overwrite the update. Now let's look for the previous code and copy paste this in there. Player idle to just general idle. Save and let's go back to Unity. We can now create a scriptable object. Oops. Ability data. We can now create a scriptable object called idle. Name it idle, and we're going to drag it into the idle state. So, two different states with the exact same code, only with two different types of actions that are predefined. So now when we look at the player move forward script, we can put in the speed for this card. And later we'll be able to duplicate and create more and we can call it enemy move forward and many more and we can define all their speeds individually just by changing the scriptable objects. Click play and everything should be fine. Okay. Now I'm going to delete player idle and player walk because we're not going to use those scripts anymore. And let me take a look at the character state base. The name is a little too long for me. We're also not inheriting from this code anymore. So let me just get rid of the word base. Go in there. And we also have to change the name here. Basically everywhere else. State base to just state. We also got to go here, press F12 to go to the definition, and also change everything here. Make sure you save. 
go back to Unity. There's a couple more, we're getting the error message. So double click on those and fix it here as well. Once you fix everything, make sure you save. Let's go back to Unity, wait for the code to compile. And we still have more. That should be it. Let's click play again. And I think everything should be fine. Let me take a look at the scene view. It's fine. Now let me organize some of the folders. Looks a little cleaner. Let me play again, just to check. And that's it for today. Setting up structure in the beginning might be difficult, but once we get through this part, we'll be able to have some sort of a template that we can use and start creating characters, uh, things like players and enemies and AI, stuff like that in the future. Those stuff will be easier once this is all set up. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.